Welcome everyone to a brand new IDW Sonic mini-series event, Imposter Syndrome. Ever since it was announced some months back, there has been some build-up to this moment. Before we continue, I'm going to give my obligatory spoiler warnings. If you don't count the Issue 46 cameo, the mini-series will mark the official debut of Dr. Starline's Test Tube creations, Surge the Teneric, and Kit the Fennec. IDW Publishing went out of its way to try and promote these characters. For example, they posted some TikTok videos of concept art featuring these two and... Oh. Oh, Kit. Um, what, what are you doing to that guy? Um, oh dear. Anyway, I'll talk more about these two in the general thoughts section. As for Starline's newest plan, while it appears the seeds have been planted as far back as the Bad Guys miniseries, there's also the chance the idea could have happened much earlier such as here, or even here. The point is, Starline, after all the scheming, deceiving, and kidnapping, he's ready to take his new creations for a test drive. Imposter Syndrome is also part of a larger saga going on called The Road to Issue 50, which began with the main series story arc, Trial by Fire, the conclusion of which will come out in December. I'm guessing they're beginning this mini-series now so that everything lines up when issue 50 arrives. You can even see the build-up to issue 50 on the cover. I'm not putting this off any longer, so let's get started. Starline is recording another vlog detailing his progress on what he calls Operation Remaster. You'd think he'd learn not to do this when someone can figure out a way around your security measures? Actually, did Starline ever figure out if Mimic accessed his files? Whether he did or not, I'd imagine he would beef up security for this important project. Joking aside, the vlog serves the purpose of exposition. Starline has observed what he dubs the Sonic Cycle. Dr. Eggman has a world-changing plan, then Sonic and company arrive to stop him, the populace rebuilds, and life goes back to normal. Rinse and repeat. Operation Remaster will break this cycle by first removing Eggman from the equation. Starline still respects the Doc on some level, but believes he's limited by his Sonic obsession. Starline aims to be better than Eggman. The next part of Operation Remaster is to replace the heroes the people depend on. Yeah, he wants to control the hero versus villain dynamic in order to change the world. The first of these new heroes is based on Sonic, except it's a Teneric, green, and female. Rather than have a metal Sonic-like machine, Starline wanted Surge to have the same attitude and roguish charm as our blue hero, but hopefully kept on a leash. She's currently testing her skills on some Badniks, backed up by creation number two, based on Miles Tails Per Hour, Kitsunami. <laughs> Clever wordplay there, Ian. The two use their skills to complete the course in record time. Or rather, Surge completes the course. Kid arrived late because he needed to recharge his water pack. Starline wants to do some field tests before they take on the main mission, but the impatient Surge believes she is ready for the big stuff now. She goes as far as threatening Starline to force him to approve the mission. Starline regains control of the situation by hypnotizing her to sleep, and making Kit forget he saw that. When they come to, Starline lied to them about blacking out due to overexertion. His plan for the moment is to get rid of Sonic's support group, and it just so happens, some of them are heading off to a camping trip. It would be a shame if they were to die in an accident from, say, a forest fire? That is Surge and Kit's first task out in the field. A few days later, he sends the two to sow chaos in Central City without getting caught. Kit wants to go underground and manipulate the wiring to throw the traffic lights and power grids into disarray. Surge prefers the direct approach as she speeds along the road, causing traffic accidents. Meanwhile, Starline's at Tails' lab because he wants to cover his tracks. He's worried that if Tails were to analyze Bell's coding and find something similar in Surge and Kit, he could develop countermeasures. Starline wants to destroy all potential progress, if he can enter the lab. Tails has reinforced it greatly ever since the Zombot outbreak. Surge and Kit arrive, and the latter's hydro coils cannot penetrate the door. Smashing it open is not an option because they're trying to be stealthy. 
it doesn't matter because they've ran out of time. That's not the only setback. Major spoiler warning for Trial by Fire. Starline reads the girls not only survived the forest fire, but saved all the campers as well. This prompts another clash between Surge, who prefers the direct approach, and Starline, who insists on stealth and secrecy. He presents the final test, getting rid of Dr. Eggman. And to do so, they need to cut off his support. As he explains the plan to strike a remote base, Surge has had enough. She wants to go after Sonic now. Starline asks, what if the Hedgehog is not alone? Surge says it's no problem, Kit can handle them. Though Kit being hesitant causes Surge to doubt her partner's abilities. This leads to them asking, do they really want to destroy Sonic? They never really met the guy, and have no strong motivation besides what Starline programmed into them. And it seems that programming is a bit faulty. Starline hypnotizes them into unconsciousness again, only they're developing a resistance to it. The coding he stole from Bell, and modified to fit their personalities, is not producing the desired results. Starline decides to push forward, hoping the personalities will stable once they start fulfilling their primary directives. He just needs to handle them more carefully. After they reactivate, Starline fabricates this story. They glitch due to a heated argument, which overloaded their upgrades. Kit caught Surge before going offline himself, it's to get the two to like each other again, and the argument itself is Starline trying to push ahead to complete the main mission, and Surge wanting to do one more field test. Surge and Kit buy this, and part one ends with Starline repeating his plan to infiltrate one of Eggman's remote bases. On the day this issue was released, Ian Flynn tweeted that the story fulfilled the desire of getting the Glitch Trio out there. That is, these glitched characters from the 2D Sonic games. We'll get to Surge and Kit in a moment, as they are definitely glitched. But lumping Starline in here is interesting, but also not surprising. I pointed out in the past that he reminded me of Dr. Finitivus from the Archie comics. I'm also getting Dr. Finitivus vibes from this guy, Finitivus being a creepy albino echidna scientist from the Archie comics who has chaos powers. Finitivus, along with Dr. Zachary of the Fleetway comics, were based off the Wakinna glitch from Knuckles Chaotix. And now it's more or less confirmed that Starline was also based on Wakinna. Only this time they can't use an echidna since IDW Sonic is more in tune with the games than in past series meaning no new echidnas outside of Knuckles and Tikal, so might as well use another egg-laying mammal. Now, I wouldn't say Starline is glitched. He's more flawed, and we see it in this issue's story. Starline learns the hard way why Eggman prefers robotic knockoffs with simple, obedient personalities. And even Eggman installed safeguards in Metal Sonic after the Sonic Heroes incident, and there are these guys that turned against him for various reasons. Okay, Eggman doesn't have a perfect record when it comes to loyalty from his robots. The point is, if Eggman wanted to, he could reprogram the robots so that they'll be 100% under his control. That's the flaw with Starline. He tends to underestimate situations, especially ones he tries to control. In this case, using biomechanical beings with complex personalities in an attempt to break the Sonic Cycle. Hey, at least he's aware of the world he lives in and wants to liberate it from playing the same game over and over. And he has achieved smaller victories in preparation for this massive plan, some of them by the skin of his teeth. This is why he's testing Surge and Kit. He doesn't want his creations to break down at inopportune moments, thereby ruining his entire plan. I know he wants to be better than Eggman, but it wouldn't have hurt to program some safeguards in his creations especially since they're becoming immune to hypnosis. He was so excited about acquiring Bell's coding for his creations and implementing them right away that he didn't have time to properly study it. Now he has to deal with their flaws and hopes things will eventually sort themselves out. Let's switch over to our two new characters. Thanks to the behind-the-scenes TikTok video, I learned that Ian Flynn had these two characters in the pipeline before the IDW Sonic series even came to be. Does this mean they could have been part of the Archie continuity had it not been cancelled? Eh, who knows at this point. 
Serge the Teneric. First of all, we have our first female villain in the series. In case you haven't noticed, most if not all the original villainous characters in the IDW series were male and all the heroic ones were female. Hey, Starline broke at least one kind of cycle. Surge takes inspiration from the Ashura the Hedgehog glitch from Sonic the Hedgehog 2 16-bit, especially in the facial area. Her being a Tenric is I guess a nod to how often that species is compared to hedgehogs. They may look similar, but there are noticeable differences. This is not the first time a Tenric has appeared in Sonic comics. In the Archie Sonic spin-off Sonic Universe, there was a Silver the Hedgehog story arc that featured a character called Gold the Tenric, who had her own special powers. Which brings us to Surge's abilities. Starline wanted her to have an additional jolt compared to Sonic, to be as fast as lightning, thus the electrical powers. And it would explain her name. And finally, her look and attitude is an extreme version of Sonic, with none of the heart and compassion of our hero. Her punk aesthetic and sharp teeth sell this. In some way, it's kinda like having Scourge the Hedgehog back in mainstream comics. For those unaware, Scourge was a character in the Archie Sonic comics. He was an evil alternate universe version of Sonic that turned green after a botched super transformation using the Master Emerald and becoming a more darker, sicker version of our hero. I'm aware of the name similarities between these two characters. In fact, as I was recording this script, I almost said Scourge when I meant to say Surge. Anyway, there was a whole legal mess involving the character Scourge, since Ken Penders created the evil Sonic, and Ian Flynn transformed the character into Scourge. But ultimately, Ken got the character. And that's all I'll say about that. Kit the Fennec is based off the Blue Knuckles glitch from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. The big floppy ears and hair are reminiscent of Dreadlocks, and the shoes are based off of Knuckles' Lego shoes. Blue Knuckles' connection to Tails in the game comes in the form of the act completion, where he's referred to as Tails. As I briefly touched upon in the summary, Kit's full name, Kitsunami, is a combination of the word Kitsune, the name of the multi-tailed foxes of Japanese folklore, and Tsunami, a series of waves in a body of water. Kit's primary ability is a water pack that utilizes water tentacles, giving him some additional tails, as it were. Kit being a Finnick makes sense because Finnicks are a type of fox, and Starline more than likely modified the fur he stole from Tails. Like the Surge Gold example mentioned earlier, Kit is not the only Finnick that appeared in the Sonic comics. In the main Archie series, post-reboot, there's a character called Sonar the Fennec, and she was part of a trio of freedom fighters she formed with Spike the Porcupine and Trevor Burrow the Mole. This formation was deliberate both in and out of universe, as the trio were fans of Sonic, and it's clear which characters were emulating who. Starline seemingly gave Kit a timid personality. Perhaps to counterbalance Surge's extreme personality? That is what Starline was going for. I hope Starline was emulating Tails' personality at the time of Sonic Adventure 1, and not Sonic Forces. Some quick things before I wrap this up. Just as I speculated in my Issue 46 review, we got a brief glimpse of the Trial by Fire arc from Surge and Kit's point of view. Though no cameo from Ash or Bell as the two started the forest fire. When Surge is speeding through Central City, there's a shot of this character right here. This is Ian Jr., a Sonic Forces avatar character created by Ian Mutchler. He's a storyboard artist that contributed to Sonic Mania Adventures and Sonic Team Racing Online. And then there's Starline commenting on Tails' house, relating to what a number of people, myself included, pointed out. Geniuses using symbols to display their egos. Geniuses have big enough egos to build structures in their likenesses. While it feels like nothing is happening plot-wise, the big strengths in this issue are the character interactions between the Glitch Trio and the great-looking art. And seeing this as part of the overall build-up to issue 50, I think the story can take its time a bit. Again, Starline must make sure his creations are ready enough for his world-changing plan. When we return to this miniseries, we'll see how these three plan to get rid of the main villain of the franchise. I'll see you then.
Starline's just jealous because Tails and Eggman have instant brand recognition based on their looks, while his brand makes it look like you're visiting the dentist's office. Yeah, I made a similar joke in an earlier video, but you can't deny what that symbol looks like. 